Lights Were Out was written by Jack Sharkey. It's a farcical murder mystery. And so it centers around a world famous neurosurgeon and his wife. And they have invited a house full of guests to celebrate the um, engagement of their son to a famous fashion designer. So some of the guests are invited, some are not invited. And for many of them, there's way more than meets the eye. So as tensions grow and the storm grows during the first act, um, and I should mention too that the entire thing takes place in this huge house in Bermuda on the brink of a cliffside during a storm just to add to that murder mystery suspense and tension. And so um, as that tension builds between these characters and the weather, it uh, culminates with the lights going out. And when they come back up, the audience and the characters are left scrambling to figure out what happened. While the Lights Were Out has a huge cast for being a straight play, a lot of the time with musicals you'll see pretty large casts. Um, this is a straight play, so a non-musical. It has 15 characters in it, um, all of whom have their own stories and relationships. So we spent a, quite a bit of time early on in the rehearsal process talking through who these characters are, how they relate to one another. So we created a timeline for all these characters as well early on in the rehearsal process that goes back as far as like two decades before the actual events of the play. Um, because it was really important for us to understand who these people are, why they're here, how they relate to one another, um, because all of that adds to, to the tension in these relationships that we can see happening on stage. So we worked with our dramaturg, uh, Luis Galvez, early on in the rehearsal process to delve into the genres of murder mystery and farce, uh, where they differ and where they cross over. So for murder mysteries, we have some really classic tropes. We have, you know, like the unsympathetic victim and the detective and the murder weapon and the big reveal. And um, usually, you know, it's a some sort of event with invited or uninvited guests and with farce, we get that plays more into like physical comedy and really sort of like unrealistic or improbable situations that characters are thrown into. Uh, big physical comedy and gags and things like that. And so being able to kind of keep one foot in both of those has been really entertaining because it, it is both in Jack Sharkey, the playwright. He, he, he published like, uh, I think over 80 or something plays. He uh, was an editor for Playboy magazine, like a joke editor for Playboy magazine for Allstate magazine. He wrote, um, you know, funny bits while he was serving time in the army. And so he was a very well-rounded writer, but a lot of his works were um, dealt with like murder mysteries and also with comedy. And that comes through, that really comes through very strongly in the play. So when we were creating a timeline for these characters and again, how long they've known each other, what their histories are, we, we really got into the specifics even of, you know, okay, how long ago did the butler start working for the family? How long have these two been dating? What does that history look like? Um, it ended up being a four page document that has like 90 line items of this timeline so that we could really make sure that even though we're getting into the playfulness of a farce and really over the top comedy, we're still keeping it grounded in reality. Right, so all these characters are like, are real people, right? Even though they're playing these like stereotypical, like the butler, the maid, you know, the snotty son, the unsympathetic victim, the unhappy housewife, you know, beyond that, they're really sort of fully rounded and full-fledged characters, which is really important for us to, you know, stay grounded in that reality so that we can really delve more into the world of farce. We held three rounds of callbacks after our season auditions at Rena Little Theater to cast this show. So there was so much talent in the room. It was a very difficult show to cast and many people could have played multiple characters, which just added to it. Um, but I really hit the jackpot with this cast and crew. So a lot of them are playing very over the top, exaggerated characters, which is um, one of the you know, trademarks of a farce. And we have a really impressive blend of experience in this show. So we have people who have experience in film, voice acting, radio, podcasts, improv, uh, really traditional theatrical backgrounds. And so that's been really, really fun to play with and seeing how all of their strengths complement each other. One of the highlights of watching this cast work together is seeing them bring their characters to life and using that foundation to to interact with one another, which could be something as simple as like a really loaded read of a line that'll leave the audience trying to figure out what exactly that meant, or maybe a stolen glance across the stage that you know a few people may pick up on and think, okay, what did that look mean? Is there is there more to that than than I think? That's a major draw for audience members to see murder mysteries is that idea of sort of the audience also getting to play the detective and the fun of trying to beat the detective to you know solving the mystery. So when you 
add um, a farce to that, which is really over the top physical comedy, sort of slapstick, mistaken identity, door slammy sort of comedy. It's just really, really entertaining and fun to watch um, because you get the playfulness and the laugh out loud, like silliness of a farce, but also that very serious, suspenseful, thrilling feel of a murder mystery. In terms of challenges, because this cast is so large, it's a cast of 15 and the entire play takes place in the single room of one house. And so um, in terms of space, we had to be really creative. Um, normally when I go into any rehearsal process, I have blocked out the show or choreographed it or staged it going into rehearsals. Depending on the show, um, sometimes you can be more fluid and organic with blocking and sort of discovered as a group. I've, I've definitely directed shows like that. This is one um, that I had to be very, very specific and structured with going in. I actually printed out like a gigantic uh, version of our um, stage blueprint and I used vitamins was like the best thing I could find, like round vitamins and I wrote like character initials on them and that's what I used to like move around. <laughs> it's like playing at my own weird game of Monopoly just by myself. But that's what I had to do to like make sure that we weren't gonna run into all of a sudden eight people being clustered in a corner or, you know, I got this person down here, how do I get them back up? Cause there are already three more people in that corner. So that's definitely been a, a fun challenge of figuring out, okay, how do we make 15 people, most of whom are on stage the entire time, fit in this space and, and balance everything and have everything make sense. And so there's been some joking bitterness with the cast because they're, they're like a handful of people who are standing for 90% of the show. Um, and then others who have their like comfy seat on the on the couch or in the armchair. And so we blame Jack Sharkey. We blame Jack Sharkey a lot um, for my <laughs> for my blocking. Well, this, it's Jack Sharkey's fault. He added too many characters to the play. Uh, but luckily I have a cast that's really open to exploring and playing and contributing to building moments. So even though I've established, again, all that basic staging, um, there's definitely still room to play, and there's those moments of like, hey, I want to try, I want to try a bit, or I want to try a gag, and I, I really encourage my cast to do that. I by no means think like as the director that I am this omniscient being who knows all of the funny things that should happen in the show. I really welcome that collaboration, um, and sometimes it goes really well. You know, it's my job as director to let them play out those moments and to say, brilliant, let's keep it, or okay, I see where you're going, let's try this or let's push it. Um, or, as is the case for all of us, sometimes something is so funny in your head and then you do it and immediately you're like, we're gonna scrap that and just not speak of it again because it was a terrible idea. <laughs> I think that people's expectations may also be challenged and flipped um, because it does have that farcical side to it. So for example, you know, the adept um, and genius detective that we might get from Agatha Christie uh, is gonna look very different in this sort of show. Um, and the serious crimes and events that, that might transpire in a traditional murder mystery are being pushed into the comedic realm. And so I think that it's gonna be really fun um, and a fun and unique experience for audience members who are watching it.